Hello everyone, I'm Pilar Archila with Pure Gold and I have a very special couple here with me, uh, Jeffrey and Lauren. How are you today? Doing very well, thank you so much. How are you? I'm, I'm great. I'm sitting with you guys here. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> We're glad to be here. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Um, for a long time, I, I'm not into politics and I really don't really care much about politics. And for a long time, Facebook was just packed with politics. And, 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 and it was like, I felt sometimes I didn't even want to just open my Facebook because right. again, mm -hmm. politics. And then I came across your mm -hmm. mom. <laughs> <laughs> and she had the inspiring story about the two of you. And it's so refreshing and no politics here right it's just right. love here that's right and i just i got so in, interested i mean even before you got married you know preparing for the wedding mm -hmm. wedding oh my gosh and i want i want to hear from you guys well first of all um jeffrey are you from dublin no i'm originally from kingsland georgia southeast georgia right on the east coast and I was born and raised there, and before I moved to Dublin back in 2014, I was in seminary out in New Orleans studying to be um, to get my master's degree in church music. Yeah. And then God brought me in March of 2014 to Dublin. All right. What about you, Lauren? Are you from Dublin? I am. I'm born and raised here in Dublin. My parents are Randy and Jan Mims, and I graduated from Dublin, and in 2008, I started to go, I went to college, I went to the community college here, and I transferred to Georgia College in Milledgeville. Uh -huh. um, while, the, while I was there, I was studying for middle grades education, and of course my senior year, started looking for a job, and um, thought maybe I'll go back home, but obviously was looking for other options, but um, the Lord provided a job here at the school that I graduated from. And so um, I took. So that what? What was that school? Where did you graduate from? I graduated from Trinity. Oh Christian yes, school. Mm -hmm. yeah, very close to my house. Right, <laughs> right. So we um, anyway, I accepted the position there and was very excited and moved back home, not knowing that I would meet my husband. Oh here. my gosh! Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, when you moved to Dublin, did you know people here, or it was like brand new city, brand new everything? Pretty much a brand new city, brand new everything. I knew Dick Burrell, yes. who was my predecessor at First Baptist Dublin. Right. He was a long time uh, minister of music there, and he retired. And I knew him throughout the years. And um, God brought me here to serve at First Baptist Dublin. And um, so other than him, he, he was about the only one I knew. Right. <laughs> now, um, at what point you knew about each other? Right. So... I, I had moved back to Dublin, and he was in Dublin, and uh, it, I remember it was a Saturday morning, and I had uh, gone to the gym and went to the Starbucks in Kroger because we didn't have the Starbucks, the right. self-standing Starbucks, and uh, Mr. Dick Burrell was the one I saw him, and he said, um, I know the man you're going to marry. That and is I, awesome. <laughs> I was like, do what? And we went on and on there for a few minutes, and he said, you just wait. You just wait. You're gonna. I know the man you're gonna marry, and um, and you know, I walked away from the conversation thinking, oh, please, you know. we'll yeah. see. <laughs> you know, um, and it was shortly after that time we met. Um, I guess officially met in June. Um, we were both serving at a church camp in Tacoma, Georgia. Now, when you met him. You thought this is the guy that Dick was talking about, right? Okay, yes. so at that point you were intrigued about him, right? I, <laughs> I knew of him, um, but of course, you know, it we met, we introduced ourselves, but he had other responsibilities, and I had responsibilities there at that church camp, and so um, we met there officially, and then throughout the course of a year, we um, saw each other at different events within the community. Uh, for example, First Fridays, uh, restaurants like Dino's and Brian Subs and things like that. We saw each other at the Veterans Wall, um, there at the VA, and um, I'm trying to think of other, uh, like church events and but things just, like I that. But just, I mean, just like... In passing. Now, 
Yes. By any chance, Dick talked to you about her yes, also? Yes, Dick. Um, Dick has, <laughs> He's the um, matchmaker here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, Dick has spoken to me about Lauren. He said, I know this girl um, that I want to inter introduce you to. And then Gina Moses also caught me at church and said, um, I would really like to introduce you to Lauren Mims. Wonderful girl. Yes. <laughs> so I've been in ministry for, you know, for many years and, and single in ministry. And so when I heard Lauren Mims, you know, she was just another name <laughs> on the list of any single woman from 18 to 80. <laughs> So church, church members were great about trying to set me up with yeah. any any single woman, and so um, so she was just another another name I'd heard about. Right. But were you intrigued? I mean, like y yes, hmm, I was. You know, especially I mean, after I saw her. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, especially after I saw her, and um, just in passing at that camp, uh -huh. I kind of got picked up a little bit on her joyful spirit and fun personality. Yeah. Now, um, you knew she could sing? Yes, I would see different... Um, because, I mean, you're into music, Yes. So. Well, and I would see different posts on Facebook. Her mom and her friends would post about them singing at her house yeah. and throughout the community. Exactly. Well, you see, that is so cool about singing. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in a home where music was number one. Right. My father played... Uh, different instruments and he sing and I, I have CDs of my father singing oh, wow. um, that I mean not like he was famous or anything but we right. made the CDs and he made the CDs and and I treasure that and my children can sing and they play instruments I mean at home to me that's a plus yes. somebody right. that likes music yes. so and she she grew up in the ministry her dad was a former That's minister of music yes. and and he's a pastor now and so you know they had those things in common also along with music and so those are all pluses for me isn't that amazing that you in another city you had all these things you know the music the ministry da 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 and then in another city there is this girl with That's the right. same yeah. thing well let me tell you something we're going to take a little short break Okay. And okay. we'll be right back. Okay. Please stay with us. Hi everyone, this is Hannah and I'm inviting all of you to come see my mom, Dawn, and me at the Freckle Frog because we're hopping again. I just want to let all of you know that we have so many new arrivals coming in daily, including clothes and jewelry like what you see that I have on, home decor, tons of it, and so cute. And I can't forget all of our St. Patrick's arrivals that are coming, including green fun blazers to keep you festive during the season, as well as dresses, jewelry, and pocketbooks. So come on by and see us and get your green so that you don't get pinched during this St. Patrick's Festival season. Come see us Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at our location, 2378 Highway 80 West, Dublin, Georgia, right across from Walmart. See you soon. Well, here we are with this great, oh my gosh, wonderful couple. <laughs> um, I'm here with Lauren and I'm here with Jeffrey. And we're talking about how they met and how they became husband and wife. At what point you said, well, she's cute, I've seen this, I've seen that, I'm gonna ask her for a date. Right. Well, some friends of ours, Will and Babs Faison, Will is the student pastor at First Baptist Dublin. Um, he was a mutual friend with Lauren. And so he came to the office and said, you need to meet Lauren. So this is another person <laughs> in the story now. And so um, she came to one of our concerts at church. And after the concert, a group of us went out to eat. And she happened to sit right across the table from me. Uh -huh. It was like we were in the zone. <laughs> she just happens to yeah, just sit. That's happened. right. <laughs> and so anyways, after that, my interest really began to, um, to rise. To rise, yes. <laughs> And so on a Wednesday night, I called her about 9.30, and we talked for like three hours that night. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm not even one to talk on I the I mean, phone. we're talking past midnight? Yes. That's right. Yes, That's and right. both have to work in the morning. And so um, I asked her out on a date for the very next day. And is that right? Mm -hmm. Next day? Yep. That's the next day. And we went to Macon, to Carabas, oh, and yeah. had 
dinner and um, she got in the car and I noticed her long legs and <laughs> her fun personality and she was yeah. beautiful and um, so we had the best time, went and got Starbucks to drink afterwards and just had a wonderful evening. Was that because I cheated a little bit, I read about their story, was that in August? 2015? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Okay. Yes, it was in August. Um, at the very beginning, it was toward the beginning of the school year for me. Uh -huh. um, well, tell me, Lauren, here you have seen him too. Were you just waiting for him to ask you on a date or to <laughs> call you? My gosh. Well, I, I had seen him throughout that summer and uh, began to just pray, like, you know, Lord, I, I think I'm ready to, to marry, yeah. um, but obviously there's timing and things like that. Um, and so once I had saw him, he actually came to a prayer walk at Trinity. And when I saw him, I'm not going to lie, my heart sank and I thought, <laughs> oh my gosh, he better call me. <laughs> and so I, I did relay the message that um, I was going to the concert uh, that he was talking about in early August. And when we went to Cracker Barrel, and um, I, it was at that point where I was hoping he praying, better he better call. I hope he calls. <laughs> I hope that he asked me on a date, and he did. And as he said, we went to Carabas, and that was our first date. That is just mm -hmm. wonderful. Uh, I, I just cannot imagine, and I understand. You know, uh, he picked you up. That's right. That hour driving. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And, and then was, the date. It was, and it was very smooth. Um, the conversation was easy and very light, uh, but yet at the same time we were able to connect, um, you know, on, on many different levels, spiritually and mentally and emotionally, and it, it was just easy, you yeah. know, and that's when, um, after the first date, I knew this would be the man. This is the man. This is the man. Now, I know that that first date was in August. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I know your wedding was in December. Yeah. <laughs> what happened between August and December? Well, the next date was the following week because we both had obligations that weekend out of town. And so on that Tuesday, the following Tuesday, we went back to Macon and to Outback. Outback. And it was then, it's like the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Yeah. I'm like, she's the one. So I could not finish eating my meal. I felt sick. I was like, God, what is going on? But I knew she was the one. Yeah. And so um, we, I went home that evening. Actually, I asked her, I guess officially, to be my girlfriend then. Wow. And like, this is I, the second day? Yeah. I was like, how do you, how do, you do this as an adult? Uh. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, I asked her officially and went home, could not sleep, woke up, felt awful the next day. And I was like, God, you are up to something. And I guess I got bit by the love bug, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and so then things started happening pretty quickly after that. And so we, um, you know, September rolled around, October rolled around, and we're, um, you dating, know, dating and getting to know each other more Definitely. and more. And, and on my birthday at the end of October was... Um, he had taken me again to a Macon and restaurant, uh, a restaurant in Macon, and um, when we got home that evening, um, he he just sat down and he said, you know, I'm, I know I'm very methodical and I'm very thoughtful and I'm a lot, I need to think about a lot of things, but I know I'm going to marry you. Oh. And so, of course, as a girl, I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the conversation <laughs> you know you've always waited for. And you know, I assured him, I said. Well, I know I'm going to marry you. And oh. I said, you take your time, whatever that looks like, um, and we'll, we just know. Yeah. And so um, he said, the only thing that I'm going to ask is that um, when I do propose, we have a short engagement. Well, the next question <laughs> tells you the difference between a, girl, you know, a woman's mind yes. and a man's mind. So my question was, um, well, how long... Uh, is a short engagement. Yeah, you for mean? you, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, because many people might consider, you know, a year or six months or, you know, for us, 48 days to be a short engagement. But he said, well, I would like to be married by summer. Uh -huh. Well, of course, being a teacher, I thought, well, the only time that I have available is spring break for us to be yeah. able to 
have a way on a honeymoon, go on a honeymoon and, yeah. and and so um he said well april would be fine spring break's fine and jokingly he said well what if we got married in december oh gosh and <laughs> not I, being serious at all we're not being serious and i looked at him i said well i've always wanted to I've always wanted a wedding at Christmas. That's always been oh, a dream. Oh my gosh. And um, as a little girl, as he said, my dad was a minister. The most beautiful wedding I've ever seen. I was nine years old. I remember walking into this wedding. It was a December wedding. And I thought, this is the most beautiful yes. ceremony I've ever seen. And, um, but I'm sure he was not willing to wait another year. <laughs> That's, <laughs> right. No. That's right. And so we, um, from there, you know, had a conversation of, Okay, December as in like two months from now. And, uh, anyway, so that was on a Tuesday night. And I said, well, Jeffrey, if this is true, if we're going to get married in December, we've got some very yeah, start moving. big yeah, decisions yeah. to make in the next couple hours. And uh, anyway, so that night we left with, let's pray. Let's just look at some possible dates. And so that following Wednesday, we both worked. And... Um, I said, well, if, if we're going to do this, we've got to just basically choose a date and from there call different vendors. Yeah, exactly. So it was the 6th, the 12th, the 19th, or the 26th. And I said, well, the 6th is too soon. Right. The 12th, you have your choir Christmas cantata. Oh, yeah. The 19th is open, and the 26th, it's the day it's after Christmas. It's almost Christmas, yeah. yeah. It's the day after Christmas, and so no one would come. And Anyway, so we decided, let's just see... December 19th. So we, call, I called my parents, he called his parents, and we, you know, told them the and idea. And shocked everybody. They were shocked. <laughs> they, were, they were excited. <laughs> they were, and they said, let's go for it. Let's, let's yeah. go for it. And so um, immediately I knew I needed to call. We needed to have the church. We needed yeah. a florist, a photographer, a band, and a caterer. And so, of course, um, you know, I, I didn't have a Pinterest board of any sort, you know, but yeah. I, I knew there were certain people I wanted yes. um, within, to help with the ceremony. And so um, First Baptist Church of Dublin was available the 19th. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always had a, a favorite photographer. And I've, I've yeah. always known that I wanted her to photograph. Um, and let me tell you, the pictures are just <laughs> out of this world. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I, she's, a, she's a photographer. She's wonderful. She's yes. the best. Um, yes. And so I went ahead and actually called another photographer, not wanting to get my feelings hurt or my hopes up. And yeah. that photographer just laughed and was like, that date's been taken for yeah, a year. Yeah, for months. Yeah. yeah. So I called the photographer I wanted, and I said, um, her name is Asha Smith. She's out of Macon. And I texted her, and I said, Asha, I know it's a long shot. And, and it's I, crazy, I but. I texted her the story, <laughs> and um, I said, I know I'm taking a, you know, a chance in the dark, but are you available December 19th? And she texts back immediately, oh my gosh, you're never going to believe that. That's the it's only It's the only date. day I have a, you see, God was putting all she the was. pieces together for the puzzle to be finished. That's and right. It was just amazing. That's right. So the 19th, well, we're going to take another short break. Okay. Stay with us to hear about the wedding. Cake Art Studio creates custom wedding cakes, groom's cakes, birthday cakes, cupcakes, and more. Give Beth Kramer a call at 478-275-8508 for all of your custom cake needs. Cake Art Studio is creating fabulous cakes just for you. Thank you for staying with us. All right, the wedding day. Tell me about it. So it's December 19th. We have a photographer, our favorite photographer, yes. and um, I call the caterer, the florist, um, the band, and uh, of course we had the church and the photographer, and every single one of those people, the people my that goodness. we wanted, that was the only date they had available. Oh my goodness. And God uh, was telling you something. Yes. yes. He was in it. Yes. And he so, was really he in it. out every detail. Um, within 72 hours, we had the entire wedding planned. Um, I goodness. called the bridesmaids. He called his groomsmen. And we, um, you know, everyone was, that was the date that they were available. Oh everyone was goodness. ready. And next was the dress for, you know, the wedding yeah. dress for me. And so, um, like I said. I, that, my, by the way, is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my best friend Babs told me about this place um, near Atlanta. And um, so I went up there and 
told the lady December 19th is when we're getting married. Well, she thought it was the following year. Of course. And I said, no, ma'am, we're talking around 48 days from now. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I showed her this dress. I said, ideally, this is the dress I would want. And uh, she looked at me and I looked at her and she says, you're never going to believe this. But oh, no. Yesterday, we had a package come in and it's this dress. Oh, and no. And I said, this is there's just... no way. There's no way. And she says, I'm not kidding. We held the dress up and said, who ordered this dress? And everyone looked and said, no, no, we didn't. And so they put it back in the box and said, we'll just ship it back to the designer. Um, anyway, they took me into the dressing room. I tried the dress on. And of course, you know, they turn you around to the mirror or from the mirror so you can't see. And so, um, again, as they're putting the dress on, um, there was another moment of silence. And I said, what's going on? And they said, well, you're never going to believe this either, but the dress is a perfect fit. Oh. There's nothing we can, there's, I mean, you there's can, no need to, to yes. do an alteration, nothing. And they said, is there anything else that you want? I said, well, I've always been obsessed with Princess Diana's veil. I said, uh -huh. I want a, you know, a long cathedral veil we'll just, <laughs> forever and ever. And they said, well, we only have one left oh. um, where we don't have to order. And so that day I walked out with everything, everything. Under oh budget, everything. Lauren, and, that is just amazing. <laughs> and so... Um, we were ready, and for yeah. 48 days, people showered us with their love. I know, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the same thing with the tuxes. I mean, just everything fell in place. Our bridesmaids' dresses were ready, and um, for 48 days, we were able to walk the journey with this community and with our yes. church family and with our family, and um, before we knew it, 48 days passed, and it was the morning of December 19th, and we were ready. Goodness. Yes. Well, God, I know He just planned this for you. He did. And uh, could not be better. Yeah. That's right. And it's been a year. That's right. A year and like three months. It has. <laughs> <laughs> Next weekend, it'll be three months. That's yes, right. a year and three months. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very happy for both of you. And, you know, these type of stories really lift my spirits yeah. and make me like, I'm going to leave here like, ah, oh, so right. refreshing. That's right. God is faithful. That's right. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for Thank sharing you. such a sweet, wonderful story with us and for accepting my invitation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And to all of you out there, thank you so much for watching and until next time.